Alright, playboys, we are back for a very surprising update that came out of nowhere. I was actually busy playing Dokkan because Dokkan just dropped some hot fire for this new Golden Week celebration. But it looks like Fey has got some hot fire of their own tonight. So, Shadow Drop with the mythic Loki data mines here. We've got her stats and boons and banes. Also, inheritance restrictions on her new B skill. We also got a April Fool's Day video as well, which is, <laughs> I mean, they kind of late for April Fool's Day, but it's also pretty awesome. I mean, I am glad to have finally gotten one at least. It's always fun when they do these, and it's our orb payer dollars at hard work, right? This is what they spend our orb money on, then I am perfectly okay with that. All right, also, we have the sauce on Loki's full artwork, the uncensored version. So we're going to take a sneak peek at that. And this was in the data mine from last time, but I didn't cover it. But we're going to go ahead and also talk about the Golden Week orb packs that are going to be on sale for the Golden Week celebration. I believe they're already up as we speak. So kind of belated to be talking about this, but we will also make sure to get that in the video. So why don't we start things off with the... April Fool's Day video, which we have here pulled up on Twitter. It's called The Musical Tree. I'm going to quickly pause my audio here so we can listen in. It seems like this is going to be another one of those musical videos like the one where Book 6 characters were playing instruments and like the dance-off video with Fafner and Regan. So let's go ahead and see this. Oh, hold on. Let's put the audio on. All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Ratatoskr's got some moves, huh? <laughs> oh, and then Harest Velger joins in too. Okay. That is so cute. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know why we couldn't get this on, like I said, on April Fool's Day. It would have made more sense. But, hey, at least they put in the effort and they gave us something. I am at least happy about that. Certainly much better <laughs> than the Fate Channel that we got. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the music back on. And now we can continue our trek through this data mine here so let's take a look at the sauce here on mama loki's full artwork the uncensored edition so of course in the trailer in the face channel for whatever reason they decided to smoke out her <laughs> lady parts i don't know like this doesn't even seem that risky to me unless youtube is getting very uptight about like what sort of images you're allowed to show on an official source like i'm showing this artwork and i'm not going to get in trouble but i guess if nintendo does it it's probably <laughs> more cause for concern so there she is she's got a boob window on her top and some side hip showing off there which i am perfectly okay with all right then we got the attacking artwork this one was kind of sus because they covered out her butt <laughs> and she's not showing off any cheeks. So I don't even know why they needed to smoke that part out. Maybe the top, I can, I I'll give them that because she's showing a lot of curves there. But did they really need the bottom smoke? Was that necessary? I don't think so. Not at least judging by this. Okay, then we have the special attack art. A really cool effect there with the like purple smoke coming out of her staff. And just the pose is really nice. I, I like that she's got like magic fingers there. <laughs> so pretty cool. And then fine. Okay, this one is <laughs> pretty saucy. So we have the injured artwork from our mythic Loki here. And maybe this one, they could have covered her up if they showed this one on the Fate Channel, but they didn't. So I, I don't know why they felt the need to censor that Fate Channel at all. It just looked very silly. But there we go for Mama Loki's very thick artwork. And it's nice to see that she is back in effect. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to the stats for her. So these are going to be her stats, and let's also bust out the calculator so we can get her BST here. 
All right, so we got 39 on HP. We've got 47 on attack. We got 30 on speed. We got 16 defense and then 47 res for a total of 179. Completely irrelevant because she is a defensive mythic hero, so BST doesn't really matter for her scoring. She's going to be a must summon, in my opinion, for Aetherade's defense and also summoner duels where she's able to just take advantage of her C skill and neutralize active bonuses on enemies in three columns and three rows centered on her. She can do that at the start of every turn. So, I mean, that's going to be some insanely meta shit right there. So you're definitely going to want to get it while the going's hot. <laughs> do not miss out on this unit while you have the chance to get her. Okay, and then as far as her Boons and Banes are concerned, looks like we got a uh, Bane on HP. Nothing on attack. Oh, that's very interesting. You would have thought that Loki would have had plus attack, but she doesn't. Okay, we got minus speed. Looks like nothing on defense, and then plus res. Okay, so at least we have one super boon, and it's in res, which is perfectly fine. She's definitely going to need a lot of res so she can win checks. Her C skill essentially has a gold border ploy built into it, where if she's able to win the res check, then she can do a bunch of debuffs on the enemies. We can actually go ahead and quickly pull that up here, which I have ready. So Divine Deceit, if she's got five more, or... If her res is 5 high, or no, she gets plus 5 res to her already base res, and then if your res after that is higher than the enemy's res, then you can inflict gravity on enemies in cardinal directions. You can also inflict ploy and exposure in 3 rows and 3 columns center on Loki, which is the gold border ploy effect built in. And then she's also got the penalty, or the bonus neutralization rather, which is also in three rows and three columns. And this one, the only condition here is that the enemy has to have at least three active bonus effects. So no stat check, but if they've got a ton of bonuses, you're just going to turn them all off and give them the middle finger in the process. <laughs> so very awesome stuff there. We also have information for the inheritance limits on her B skill, Dazzling Discord. It is going to be inheritable to all staff type units with no movement penalties. So pretty good. You'll be able to give it to your flying staffs, your infantry staffs, your cavalry staffs. There's a lot of staff types of different movement types. So nice skill there to give them a little variety. It's going to allow them to inflict Discord as a penalty, which is really strong. And also, you get the Dazzling Staff effect and a stat drop in combat for attacking Res minus 4. So, pretty solid B skill for your staff types. Particularly, I would say, like, Duo Elise, Baby Emerin. Those are the type of units that are going to want to use something like that. Unless they have Dazzling Staff built into their weapon already, which... That would be pretty tragic. Which I, I think is actually the case on Elise, right? At least Elise, I know she has Poetic Justice. So she probably doesn't want to use this, which, I mean, it would have been nice to get Discord and then also get the um, dominance effect out of that, at least. But it is what it is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish up by taking a look at these Golden Week Orb Packs. So the first one is 3 bucks for 10 orbs, and you can buy it twice. I mean, that's a good orb-to-money ratio, because typically it's like 2 orbs per dollar. This is a little over 3 orbs per dollar, which is efficient, but... I mean, what are you going to get with 20 orbs, right? <laughs> You're going to get, like, four summons and nothing is going to be in it. So, it would have been nicer if this was a bigger money spend for the same orb-to-money ratio, but it is what it is. Okay, here we have a Duo Thor pack where you can get Duo Thor for $24.99, and you could buy this twice, and you're getting 53 orbs. This is actually a really valuable pack, I would say. This is not that bad. If you want to spend, then... This is something to consider, because of course Duo Thor is still as good as ever. She's able to pop the Duo skill to neutralize penalty or neutralize bonuses, and then she is actually one of the more decently scoring Duo heroes. Even though she is kind of old at this point, she still has high enough scoring where she can be relevant for modes like Arena at plus ten. So two merges right there, and then also the amount of orbs you're getting on the house and some flowers too. So this is a pretty good pack. Okay, then we have this pack where you're getting. It looks like two different tickets. One is for the Brave 7 and one is for the Brave 6 Choose Your Legends banners. Those have the Hero Fest rates, but I mean, tickets, I, I would rather get a unit or like some better form of currency, like an Ascended Floret or something like that, if you're going to be spending this much money. So I, I don't really think this one is necessarily worth it unless you're a whale, and in, in which case, just buy everything that's on sale if you're a whale. 
All right, yeah. So as we thought, it, it has the Roman numerals right there. So we knew it was CYL 6 and 7 tickets. Okay, then they have this. So this is the Ascended Floret Pack. For 50 bucks, you're getting 120 orbs, and then you're also getting the Floret and some Trait Fruits, too. Both of these are really valuable currency if you are a competitive player. So, I, I mean, I, I can't tell people not to get this, even though I don't like that it's 50 bucks. <laughs> For 50 bucks, you could go out and buy yourself a better game than Faye and actually have hours of enjoyment. So, the asking price is definitely a bit steep. I would have preferred this if it was like $24.99, like the same as the Duo Thor pack. But I guess it is what it is. And the the florette is really good because these are so limited. You, you can barely even get florets as it is. So... Any time they're available is definitely going to be good. What they really need to do, since they decided to make Ascended Heroes one florette per copy, which was the dumbest thing in the world, what they need to do is make it so that you can remove a florette from a unit you've already given it to and then put it on somebody else. Because I've already given out a ton of florettes to a bunch of units that are now obsolete. <laughs> so completely wasted on this really limited currency that I would like to just take off of old units and put on the newer ones so it would be nice if they address that as a feature as a way to like tie this over as they release more florets in different ways but i guess it is what it is and then of course we already saw the missions we've pretty much <laughs> everyone's done them to farm out the tickets so that is everything in this very stealthy data mine update that they dropped for mythic loki let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and i will catch you guys again on the flip side